Hey guys, me again with a, another YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the third tutorial in our revamped LDD tutorials videos. Excuse me. Today we're going to be taking a look at a, another of our tabs in Lego Digital Designer. In our first video, we talked about Lego Digital Designer, the blue tab, this tab right here. In our second video, we talked about Lego Mindstorms and how it's the most useless of the three tabs. I do not recommend using it. I would rather you use the blue one over the white one any day. And in this video, we'll be talking about our black tab, the Lego Digital Designer Extended, and why Lego Digital Designer Extended is the tab that I use extensively and the only tab that I use in Lego Digital Designer, and why every time you open the screen to this view, you should click immediately on the black tab itself. The home screen is not doing us any justice, so instead we're going to come down here and click on free build again to get inside of our scene. We've already seen most of these stuffs before. I've gone over this in the first and second video. Now we're going to be talking about the differences between the blue and white tab versus the black tab and why the black tab is superior to the other two tabs. The main difference between the black tab, white tab, and blue tab is our brick palette. You can see without touching any filters inside of Lego Digital Designer, the only pieces that show up here are red. There are no others at all. So if we come down here and we say, okay, I'll, I'll save that for now. This right here is one of the large differences between the black tab and the white tab because if we expand all of our dividers here, if you go back and you watch in our first video talking about the blue tab when I did the same thing and was showing you all the myriad of colors, in this one you can see that we have a lot more bricks present than the other one. So the other one we really only got to I want to say right about around here, way down here, because of all the excess colors that we have here. Again, I understand that we can fix that with filtering, but the less buttons that you have to press, the more efficient the process. LDD Extended, the black tab, has already filtered all of that for you and is now showing up here. So that's a main proponent here. LDD Extended is far more efficient than the white or blue tab and that is why I recommend using LDD extended. You can see everything here is in a red color when you first load in and some people might not like that red color which is why we can filter it. Um, it's kind of weird that we can filter these by color but it helps. So I, I, I say that the LDD extended tab is more efficient than the other tabs because you don't have to use a filter for color. And it's true to a certain extent. If you would like for all of these pieces here to be a color that is different, it's definitely possible. You come down here to filter bricks by color and you switch it to whatever color you want and it changes every brick in the palette to this particular color. So a good difference between the black tab, white tab and blue tab is in the black tab, if I filter this to a rare color that not every piece has ever come in, I can guarantee that not every piece has come in. Let's go to warm gold. There are very few pieces made in warm gold. Certainly not all of these. LDD extended the black tab, no matter what color you filter by, it does not hide any of the pieces itself. In the white or blue tab, if you filter by color, there are certain pieces that are not available in that color inside of Lego Digital Designer, not necessarily in real life, and therefore it disappears from the brick palette. So you could be looking for a piece that you know is in a certain um, divider and not find it because it has disappeared because of the color that you're working with. Uh, and again, the black tab is more superior than the blue or white tab because of this. It shows you all pieces still all available in the color that you have chosen specifically. As a small little side note, I recommend working in a color that is comfortable to you uh, and in a color that is not going to hurt your eyes too much. 
So you can see if we choose a very light color here, the shadows inside the brick palette well define what all of these pieces are. If we switch to a dark color, specifically like a black, uh, the forest green or the navy blue, some of these shadows disappear. Like this brick here, you can't you can't really tell what it is. You might not know what profile brick one by four single grow means it means single groove by the way so if you click it out you have to drag it over here into the actual scene itself to kind of figure out what it actually looks like instead of just being able to look at it on the video so if we if we switch back to a lighter color you can see that these shadows help you kind of define what this actually is so uh, that's just a, a quick side note i tend to work in lighter colors and then um, use more specialty methods to correct all of my stuff so uh, another difference between the blue or white tabs as opposed to LDD extended as I explained in the other two videos is the paint tool all other tools are the same other than the paint tool um, I personally like the paint tool and LDD extended better if you would like to use it in the blue version which is not working currently for some strange reason or if you'd like to go and use the white version feel free to do so for the sake of the tutorials and going forward, we'll be using LDD Extended because it is the best of the three tabs. So let's say I'm working in this very off green yellow color and we'll just use a two by two again because we were able to do it in the uh, white tab video, the second video. We come over here to the paint tool and you can see that this doesn't work the same exact way as the white tab right off the bat. You can see that there are four new things over here off to the side. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just try to recolor the brick itself, just like the other tool itself. Uh, and to do so, we're going to make sure that our paint tool is selected. And whatever color we choose to put in this box right here is the color that this will turn into. I have not yet clicked, and therefore I can just drag the mouse away. And you can see that this will change colors as long as the mouse is hovering over it with the bucket, the paint bucket tool selected. Sometimes you might not be necessarily sure how something is going to look uh, in terms of single pieces. So if you just do this and hover over it, you can kind of get a feel for it. If you actually click it itself and then you drag off, it's now switched to black. If you'd like another color other than black, you can click on this box and it will show you all available colors inside of Lego Digital Designer. This is another very subtle difference between the black, blue, and white tabs. This difference is incredibly subtle and no one would have noticed if I hadn't pointed it out to you. In the white or black tabs, these colors down here are not available for use. These legacy colors are colors that are not currently used by Lego at all. Um, and I can't necessarily say that because they actually just brought back bright bluish green. Bright bluish green was not in use for the longest of times. It's like teal, basically. Um, and they just recently brought it back in the Lego Diner set. And we're kind of trying to make some new pieces in that very limited edition color. It's a very beautiful color. I do love the color a lot. So in terms of painting things, uh, you can select any of these colors. You can see that black is selected right now because there's this light blue border around it. So we're going to choose another darker color so you can see how that border shifts from black over down. So we click on earth blue and you can see that now there's a light blue border around it as well. So now this box is in earth blue and we hover over and we can click and it turns to earth blue. So let's say that we have a green brick out and we switch this to um, earth blue but we don't necessarily like the earth blue we wanted to go back to this yellowish green we can use the color picking tool again this is another difference between uh, white and blue um, their paint tool will probably get its own dedicated video but a real brief rundown is you can click on the green it will switch immediately to that and then we can switch it to the paint tool and press over here so now that the brick palette itself has been simplified, you can see that none of the pieces here are printed. In the blue tab video, we talked about how these one by one pieces have eyes on them and how they all the versions are available in the actual brick palette itself. You can see that there are no printed pieces here. So even if we go to the tiles, you can see that there are no printed pieces here. 
And the way that you get printing inside of the black tab, another main difference between the blue and white tab is you use the decoration tool right here. And then you click on the brick and you actually have a myriad of different designs that you can choose from, which is all relatively simple to do. If you'd like to know how I was moving these around, I'm simply right clicking or uh, on the trackpad, I'm using two fingers and clicking. Uh, but real simple, you can do that for most scenes themselves. So um, the colors available inside of LDA Extended are more uh, based solely on this legacy portion down here. The paint tool itself is slightly different and the brick palette is more efficient to use. That right there is, if you've watched all three videos, the main differences between the blue, white, and black tab. In order of the most useless to the most useful, it would be white tab, blue tab, black tab. I recommend using the black tab solely for the sake of tutorials, like I've said in previous videos, I will be using LDD Extended, the black tab only. It does not necessarily make you a bad person to use the blue or white tab. It's up to personal preference, really, whichever you are most comfortable with. If you have solely used the blue tab and are used to the blue tab, I'm sorry about that background noise. I just dropped my phone out of my pocket. If you have only used the blue tab in your entire existence of LEGO Digital Designer and you've been doing that for years now, it actually might be more efficient for you to be using blue tab than me because you're used to it. Whatever makes you more comfortable as a builder, you can do. I'm just going to let you know right now that my personal opinion is that the black tab is the best of the three tabs and you should be using the black tab. That is just me. I'm not trying to pressure you. I'm just letting you know that the black tab is the best tab. With that, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to comment and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. Remember guys that your creativity with these tools is the only limit inside of LEGO Digital Designer. If you can figure out how to use these tools in very creative ways, you will be very surprised on what you can do very efficiently and very quickly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to come rate and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. I will see you guys later in a, another YouTube video.